this is Ed Murrow speaking. In this, my first commentary for a British newsreel, I have been invited to tell you something of the land and sea invasion of Iwo Jima. And there it is, Iwo Jima, eight square miles of volcanic rock. To two divisions of the United States Marines fell the task of creating that bridgehead, 4,500 yards wide. The greatest United States force ever assembled in the Pacific closes on Iwo Jima. 800 ships and thousands of small landing craft head for the island. Carriers, lying back of the main fleet, sent in hundreds of bombers. For 72 days before the landings, our bombers pounded the heavily fortified Jap base. Suribachi, 546 feet volcano, guards Iwo and heavy, dangerous flak threatens planes coming in to dive bomb shore positions. The death-dealing planes of the task force return, some of them carrying the scars of battle. Others are even less fortunate. Breaking free of the wreckage, the pilot swims until help arrives. Our battleships struck 10 separate times at Iwo to soften it up. The Japs, mistaking our reconnaissance for attack, reported our landings had been repulsed. Three days and nights of thunder and flame preceded the actual landing. And the landings are routed with timetable precision. Marines of the 4th and 5th Divisions, delivered by the Coast Guard, head for the beach. Further protection is provided by a cover barrage of light guns and rockets. 40,000 Marines are rushed to the desolate shores of the island. So important is the plan for victory over Japan. Enemy planes based on Iwo's two airfields were a continual menace to our big B-29s passing near this base on the round trip to Tokyo. From rocky positions, enemy mortars shell our landing barges. Many boys died when a Jap shell made a direct hit. Under murderous fire, the landings continue. The Japs spent a generation fortifying Iwo Jima, realizing its great strategic value. But the Marines never heard the word impossible, and they achieved the first successful military breach of Japan's historic boundaries. Casualties are heavy, 2,000 heroic Marines died on Iwo's bloody shores. Iwo's black volcanic sands make treacherous going. Through the slit of a tank, the camera catches the advance on Motoyama airfield, which will soon serve our bombers. The dogged attack rolls up the field, and shell fire destroys many enemy planes caught on the ground. Tank flamethrowers pour a withering blast at Jap pillboxes. This Jap never reached his foxhole alive. Transports, lying offshore, await the arrival of the few Jap prisoners taken. In nearly two weeks, only 85 surrendered, half of them Korean slaves of the Japs. Digging foxholes in the loose black ash is almost impossible, and the barren island offers little comfort to a war-weary Marine. Organized Jap resistance is over on Iwo Jima. This was the toughest single action of the Pacific War. It cost nearly 20,000 American casualties, over 4,000 of them dead. But 21,000 Japanese were killed or captured, and the American flag now flies on the summit of Suribatsi. <laughs>